models are not trending in the right direction with this next storm. About five to six days from now, we could be seeing a storm move from the West Coast all the way through into the center of the United States. Man, just look at that low pressure. 973 millibar low pressure system in the middle of the United States could spell some dangerous winds on the backside, potentially some blizzards, and also the potential for severe weather and a tornado threat. Sometimes before these storms happen, we see a downtrend, but this time we are seeing quite the opposite. Before we get started, I do want you guys to consider hitting that share button. It does help us reach more people and get this information out. I know we're still a little bit far out on this storm, but this is one of those rare situations where our model agreement is very consistent across the board on what this storm could possibly do. This is why just last night we received a slight risk all the way from Texas up into Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, through some parts of the Tennessee Valley as well for day six. And on day seven, we have yet another slight risk being issued down here in the southeast. Now, given that we're talking about six days from now, this area of where we could expect some elevated threats for some severe weather and potentially tornadoes are going to change. But we're going to be going over what we kind of know now and what we can be somewhat confident about and also talking about where our trends are going with this storm. That's what we need to be monitoring. Things are going to shift around. Trends will appear. And we've kind of got our first trend already showing up. So let's go ahead and break all of that down. Okay, first off, looking at our highs and lows, this will kind of tell us where our storm is going to be and just how low pressure our center of the storm is going to be, which can determine the strength of the storm and sometimes the winds around it. As you can see, we got a high pressure over here in the western United States right now. As we move throughout today and tomorrow, we're going to have potentially some low pressures go up into the northern United States and another one down here in the southeast. Again, this one might cause a little bit of severe weather there into Florida today, and that should clear out as we go into tomorrow. And then eventually these low pressure systems come through and we get a little bit of a high pressure system up in the northern tier of the United States and in the lower tier of the United States. These two little high pressures, given the fact how small they are and how sandwiched they are in between our low pressure systems, systems here. This is going to be one of our reasons for uncertainty as we move forward as these are small scale features, which means they could change a little bit more as we go over time. But as you can see, we're only about three days out from these high pressure systems. So not a whole lot could change, but we could still have some pretty decent changes as this next storm approaches. And as I push this forward, you can see that a low pressure system digs down here from the Pacific Northwest into the central United States. And this is the one that we're going to be watching out for. We are just around the five to six day range here with this storm and this is the GEFS ensemble and as you can see as I zoom in we're talking about a 973 millibar low pressure but we also have a couple other numbers these are the other model runs that get smushed into this ensemble and you can see we're talking you know really anywhere from a 973 all the way down to a 967 968 and it seems our average of position here of this storm is centered somewhere in Nebraska and northern Kansas although this could be a little bit further to the south if some of these other ensemble members hop on board now a 973 millibar storm is a very potent storm now just because you have a strong storm doesn't always mean that you could get severe weather and a tornado threat but this one it's looking like things are lining up for those threats Coming over to the Euro model, you can see that we are also seeing the, the kind of the same signal, a little bit weaker here on the uh, on the Euro model. You can see 981 there as the low pressure with a lot higher pressures uh, out there when you compare it to the GFS, but still a strong storm, a potent storm. See those wind barbs off on the left side here. That would be, again, some pretty strong winds on the backside and also on the front side of the storm. As the closer these lines are together, the strongest the winds will be as this storm moves across the country same over here with the canadian model as well so we have agreement on all three of our models still that this storm is going to exist and that low pressure of the storm is going to be on the stronger side of low pressures now another trend that we have to watch as the storms tries to eject into the central united states and the southeast is where our forcing is with this storm and how that forcing aligns with our instability so forcing is important because in order to get tornadoes or severe weather we need mature storms that can tap into the shear environment above its head on the very upper levels of that shear in the 300 millibars whenever we get these spreading of parts of these wind vectors which are these flag looking things it creates a void and forces the storms 
to mature, giving them a higher chance of being a mature storm. And as you can see, we are seeing wind vectors going up to the north and east here. But the further we go down, we see them going more to the east to the south, meaning this entire area, really from Texas going into Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, even up into parts of Iowa and Illinois, Tennessee, Kentucky, Mississippi, are all in that area where we could have widespread mature storms. But in order to get those mature storms to sustain themselves, so there are other factors that we're going to be talking about here in just a little bit. Now, coming over to our Euro model, one of the differences we are seeing is where that forcing is occurring in our storm. So the GFS ensemble has it a little bit further up to the north. The Euro model has it a little bit further to the south. You can see our forcing is more over the southeast going into Missouri, and the further north you go, the less the forcing gets. There still could be some decent forcing up there, enough to cause some organized storms if we have other factors in play. But bottom line is, we have a wide area here where mature storms will be possible if we have the right ingredients with it. The Canadian model is also showing a similar picture here to the GEFS, where we have a large area all the way from Ohio Valley down to the southeast. So we have three models here indicating not only are we going to have a stronger low pressure system, but the force Forcing is going to be there to cause mature storms. But that's not everything that you need to get severe weather and tornadoes. Going down a little bit lower in the atmosphere, now you are in the 500 millibar range. This is kind of the upper portion of the atmosphere where we look for the beginning of that spin. The main thing we look out for is just how strong these winds are on top of the area of where we're seeing some forcing, which is really from, you know, in this area. So you can see those winds aloft are going to be strongest as this ejects into areas areas like Arkansas into Missouri and into the western Ohio Valley and then that spreads off to the east throughout the day meaning we could have pretty strong winds a lot here all the way throughout this event with much of our forcing being up here coming over to the euro model you can see the trough is a little bit weaker here still some pretty strong winds near the southern side of the storm at least where the euro is indicating where our forcing will be pretty often when we have some forcing especially with a trough that could be potentially negatively tilted that upper level shear typically overlaps with it same over here with the canadian so we have all three models saying that we have a pretty strong upper level jet that could be possible now keep in mind this is just the averages so some of the model runs will be a little bit higher or a little bit lower than this but overall it does seem like this synoptic environment where that upper level shear is there so we know we'd have a strong low pr pressure system we know that we have a decent upper air pattern to support a lot of mature storms we know we have stronger winds in the upper levels now in order to complete the picture of whether or not we'll have spin in the atmosphere is by looking at our lower level winds this is going to be in the 850 millibars 60 knots is quite potent of a lower level jet and keep in mind these are averages so that there's definitely a potential that we could have stronger winds than this orientation to the south to the line is a little bit parallel which is a certainly an indication that our forcing is further up to the north and you can see our more perpendicular line so our upper level winds in the 500 millibars are going this way but all the way down here in the 850 millibar range they're going from south to north that is a perpendicular look to it within that forcing and also some stronger lower level jet there so that definitely indicates that we are going to see a decent amount of spin with this storm at least according to the gefs let's go look at the euro euro is saying the same thing more perpendicular flow though all the way throughout the storm although our forcing is also a little bit further to the south as well pretty strong lower level jet completing that spin picture and same over here with the euro a little bit weaker with that lower level jet but still a plenty enough to support severe weather threat and potentially a tornado threat so everything seems to be in place here but again a lot of these little features could change and we've looked at about four or five things right now any of those four or five things changes in a way that this storm doesn't like we could definitely see a little bit of a minimalization of this threat and keep in mind there is six days for that to happen so we still have a big window here on where our opinions about this storm will shift over time but the fact that we have all of the models agreeing right now on a potent storm here. Definitely worth paying attention and keeping an eye on the latest forecasts on this guy as we figure out what those changes will be in the future. But the final and what I would argue is the most important factor of this storm is going to be the instability. You can have all the things that we just talked about, and if you don't have enough instability or moisture, sometimes you can just get no storms at all. And so instability is a very important thing to keep an eye on. We're looking at the GEFS right now, and I want to show you guys this most recent model trend. So here's a storm a long time ago on our inside 
ensembles. This was about a couple of days ago here. You can see that we had some chances of some moisture further to the south, but further to the north, there really wasn't too much. Going into yesterday, you can see that we have been consistently getting run by run a little bit further north with our chances of some instability potentially all the way up into areas like Iowa, Missouri, even over here in Illinois. And about a, a 30 to 40% chance of seeing 500 joules per kilogram, which in a sear environment like this is going to be enough to cause tornadoes really anywhere where that forcing is. And remember, our forcing is really in this area at least where we have the most consistency from the models, meaning that right here in this corridor, we've really got to watch to see what this instability does. If this falls apart and we see our instability further to the south, then that will be something to note. But as of right now, our trends are only increasing the moisture. Now, will that moisture increase forever? No, eventually we will see the models shift around with where this instability will be and at what time and also just how much there will be. There will still be changes to the forecast. Again, we are still about six days out, so a lot of things can change, but the trend is not going in the right direction. Last time we had that severe threat down into the southeast, at around this time, the trend was only going down in moisture, and that pretty much continued all the way until about two days out before the, the event, where it just kind of stabilized and didn't really change as we got closer. On this storm, the trend is currently the opposite, but starting tomorrow or even tonight, these models could come in and the trends start to go further south all the way throughout the day. It's a little bit abnormal to my brain, honestly, to think about there being that much moisture available further up to the north. But just this just could be, you know, a storm that we haven't seen in a while. So we need to watch these trends because, again, we get a thousand joules per kilogram all the way up into Iowa with this kind of environment. We're talking about a pretty strong potential here, folks, for a widespread tornado outbreak. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen right now, but that is in the realms of possibilities if we continue to see these trends go up. And just as a brief overview, we are watching out for this area for the 14th going into the 15th. The next day could see that severe weather threat sp spread further down to the south and east. Our most potent day, at least for right now, appears to be on the 14th. So again, everybody in this yellow circle here needs to be watching out for later forecasts and keeping your eyes on those trends. I will also be keeping an eye on the trends too and keeping you guys in the know. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel with post notifications on, which is the bell icon next to the subscribe button. If you want further updates from this channel, I promise we'll keep it straight on the facts and not try to overblow the storm at all. If it looks concerning, I'll say it looks concerning. But for right now, it's a little bit too early to raise any red alerts on this storm. But I will say the trend is definitely not going in the right direction if we want to see a weaker storm. Another thing I want to mention is that our snow chances are rising a little bit up here uh, with the backside of this storm over here into parts of Nebraska in the northern plains of North Dakota and South Dakota. we got about a 40 to 50 percent chance of some snow here. And if that does happen, some of those stronger winds on the backside of the storm, these are some of the areas that we could see blizzards. Now, again, the storm could downtrend a little bit. But the thing is, with these kind of storms, with those tight pressure gradients on the backside, that usually doesn't change too much over time. So if we do get snow on the backside of this thing with those winds, blizzard conditions will be possible as far south as Nebraska. So if you live in this area, make sure you're keeping your eye on that threat. But in terms of the short range here, we are talking about a low pressure system bringing some rain and a little bit of wind up there up to the east coast there for South and North Carolina. That clipper system to the north is going to try to bring some snow, but it keeps it mostly up to the north. Eventually, we're going to have this little storm that tries to scrape some of that moisture out of our storm of interest over here on the west coast. As our storm of interest comes into the west coast, we actually could see a little bit of severe weather here in California and a lot of snow up in the, two, the Sierras. Eventually, that pushes off to the east, bringing some snow in the mountainous regions all the way across. And then we start to get a little bit out of our range of accuracy. And then that's where we start to see this storm develop. That's why I'm being a little bit more conservative on what I think this storm could do. A lot can still change, but man, it's been a while since we've seen this much model consistency on a storm. The last one where we had this much model consistency was with that nor'easter storm, which didn't actually happen. And that was consistency all the way out until day four. And then it downtrended substantially as we got closer. So that's why I'm choosing to be a little bit more conservative, telling you guys the trends without really putting any big words on it right now, because things definitely have time to change. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you think of this storm, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.